Moving on to the decals, I would just like to say that I spoke too quickly and these Ravel decals were terrible. To help position the decals, I always recommend wetting your finger just so it doesn't stick to it, and that really helped. Oh, oh no, there was a disaster. It was actually real easy. I just threw it back in the water and it kind of unfolded itself. If that was the only problem, I would have been so happy, but it all goes downhill from that. These decals were not fun to work with. They were so thick at times I thought that I was literally applying a vinyl decal to this instead of a water slide. So I just slathered it in some microset and decided to call it night. I came out the next morning to a disaster. Not really sure what happened because this has never happened before. I'd like to think that the microset actually froze overnight since it was like 28, 27 degrees at night and it broke and tore the decals. So as you can see, there is some red paint actually on that fender. I have an idea. So the last time I was in town, I took the decal sheet into my hobby shop and just color matched up some paint. So, about that idea I mentioned earlier. Getting close with this, because it's a secret. I plan to just paint over all the cracks and damaged spots and hope it all works out. What I think happened though, is the decals actually shrank. I don't know if they're supposed to do that since they're so thick, or if it's the harsh chemicals I'm using. All I know is that whenever I butted them up together, like they're supposed to go, there was gaps in them when they all dried. So I definitely know they shrank, I just don't know why. What I plan to do now is just apply all the decals so I know where I need to touch up with the paint. So here comes a very long decal montage. And it will also be overhead like what I used to do back in the day because the head rig I use, it gets kind of heavy. So all that really means is that it's going to be a fixed view and some of it's going to be out of frame. Sorry guys. I'll make it up to you guys though. So, it's a little bit of education just in case you're curious. Each one of those colors in the BMW M stripe, each one of them represents something. The light blue is actually Bavarian blue. It is the background color of the flag Bavaria and well BMW does stand for Bavarian Motor Works so I think that color is kind of important to them. The red is actually Texaco red. Yes, Texaco is in the oil company. When BMW first got into the race car game, Texaco was one of their very first sponsors. As for the purple stripe running down the center, it is simply the light blue and the red mixed together to signify the merging and partnership of the two companies.
should mention, a lot of these decals did break. That's fine though, because as long as you could salvage all the little pieces, you could put that decal back together. And I should mention one thing. Even though these decals were incredibly hard to work with, they were extremely precise. They fit exactly where they needed to go. And they did not have that extra bit of clear decal around them to mess anything up. My goal now is to spray just a tiny itty bitty small amount of paint down in each one of the cracks and gaps between those decals. And I had heard, if you take the nose piece off, the paint will shoot out straight instead of a cone. And I did a bunch of testing here just to see if that theory checks out. It might be right. As far as the paint goes, the lighter blue, the Bavarian blue, it is Tamiya X14. The purple stripe down the center, that is actually Tamiya X4, which is a blue. And the red, that is just Chevy Engine Red by Model Masters. And I didn't do it, but I thought about it. And that is mixing that red and a light blue to see if it would match that purple stripe down the center. It was cold, so I didn't spend a lot of time out in the shop if I didn't need to mixing paints. And don't mind the overspray, because all that trim around the window is going to be painted black anyway. And I was unable to save the 60 cal which pulled up with this tape. So back to using the fives. Oh, I almost forgot. I got a heater. So hopefully being out here won't be as bad. So just like last time, we'll wet our fingers so the decals don't gas yeah. I've learned nothing. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but always cut out the location numbers for these decals. Because they are decals too, and as they're a lot smaller and thinner, they will float up off the backing paper and nine times out of ten it will contaminate your decal and be stuck on her forever and when that happens it makes me very very sad And I catch my mistake later, this is supposed to say shell, not bell. 
the decal had folded over a little bit. Now, luckily, I had noticed it just a few seconds after installing it, so it was not that hard to fix. And right there it is. It clearly says shell. Quick measurements, just make sure I got everything even. I'll just use whatever's handy. And in this case, the spacing on that should be whatever the thickness of a toothpick is. Yeah, splash paints. That's the good stuff. As usual, I will mix my clear at a 3 to 1 to 1 ratio. That being 3 parts clear, 1 part hardener, and 1 part paint thinner. I don't know why this segment is so long. I think I was going to give you all details on how I mix up my clear. You all see my other videos though. You know how to do this already, right? Right? Now the first coat is always just going to be the fenders, the door jams, the undersides of the body, the things that you'll usually forget about. It is also a mist coat to go over the decals with. When you are shooting a chemically hot clear like I am, it is always a good idea to do a dust coat or a mist coat over your decals. If you guys just start off spraying heavy, full-on coats right at the beginning. Well, chances are, a chemically hot clear like what I got here, that's just gonna melt your decals. So, mist coat to build up in layers and you're gonna be just fine. Between each coat, I like to add another half a milliliter of the thinner just to help the paint keep flowing and laying out smoother. Now, this is the third and final coat. Now, as you can see, I am laying well, well into that trigger and laying out a lot of clear. on the hair best thing to do just keep going and sand it out later if you try to dig it out now you're just gonna mess up your paint so just roll with it and sand it out later it's really all you can do
I should also note the rear hatch, the engine bay, and the little trunk. So you call that little thing. I'm doing my best to not get clear up in there because that's all going to get painted black later. And it is kind of hard to get paint to stick to clear. And that will wrap up this video in the painting. I want to thank you all again for watching. I'm doing my best to get videos out while I can. Hopefully that little space heater warms things up. Aside from that, just share with your friends. It's a hobby. Get them interested.